Yo, 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 it's your boy Burnell Washburn coming at you with another episode of Creative Success coming at you from Big Cottonwood Canyon, Utah. So sorry if it's a lot of background noise. Hopefully it's like a beautiful nature soundtrack because there's a gorgeous river flowing next to me and some birds chirping and hopefully it sounds decent. So anyway, I just had some thoughts coming to my dome and I wanted to share them with you as always. See if I could provide a little bit of value to you guys on the subject of getting paid for shows and charging for intangible creative skill sets and um, services that you provide. So this is a popular topic. I've heard a lot of people talking about it on my social media feeds lately, especially on Facebook. I've seen a ton of artists actually complaining about not getting paid for shows and they're blaming the scene or they're blaming promoters or they're blaming venues or the industry or this and that or they're just kind of getting uh, frustrated and they're like, I'm taking a stand, I'm charging for shows from now on, motherfuckers. And I feel them, I feel them. But I think they have a few different uh, little lapses in their mindsets that I can maybe help sort out just because I've been on both sides of the spectrum. Um, I'm qualified to talk about this. I've been paid to play shows in tons of different states. I've been paid you know, really good amounts of money, in my opinion. Um, I've been flown out by individuals, companies, promoters, venues, festivals, um, flown to different states to go perform. What up, butterfly? There's a beautiful butterfly that literally just flew right up in my face. That's a blessing. That's a positive omen. Um, But anyway, I've made my living off performing mostly for the last seven years and I was selling beats and other stuff too, but for a long time it was really mostly just performances, and um, I've had tons of different people and different companies and things pay me for my performances, and I've also been throwing shows myself and been the one that's paying other people to perform, and I've been on committees like Utah Arts Festival, or Urban uh, Utah Arts Alliance, and throwing Urban Arts Festival and um, helping be like a deciding factor on who gets paid and who gets booked for festivals and shows and things like that. So I've been on both ends of the spectrum and I think I have a lot of insight and wisdom on this topic that I think I can provide and help you out and maybe help you start getting paid more for your shows. I also made a video about this like a year or two ago that I'm going to put a a link to in the description where I, I was more planned out and thought out about it. This is more of just like a quick rant on my phone, but I'll put a link to that video because I think I have a ton of insights in there as well. But I just wanted to sort of like chit chat about it today and offer some of my vibes on it and see if we can help get you paid more for shows. So we are going to just assume right now from the get go that you already deserve to get paid. We're just going to assume that you already have a big enough fan base to where you're actually bringing in revenue to these shows that you're performing at. And we're going to assume that when you post about a show that you're playing, you're getting tons of interaction and and engagement online. And we're just going to assume that you've already paid dues and you've been doing this shit for a while. You've developed your confidence and your skills on stage already. And you've played tons of shows for free. You've done tons of open mic nights. You've maybe even thrown a few of your own shows and you've just you've developed your chops and you have a, a nice little following that loves to perf- that loves to pay to see you perform and there's at least you know 50 to 100 or more people that'll come pay money to see you perform every time at least you know what I mean hopefully even more than that so let, we're just going to assume that you've already reached that point if you haven't reached that point then you just need to focus on getting to that point, playing as many free shows as possible, getting your name out there, building your portfolio, paying dues, showing your talents, developing your stage skills, and building up a fan base that wants to see you perform. So if you haven't done that, you need to focus on that stuff already, first and foremost, before you even think about getting paid for shows. A little bit about my mindset is I played shows for I think it was like at least two maybe even three years straight before I ever even thought about getting paid for shows, before I ever even, like, considered it to be a possibility. I did tons of open mic nights. 
I even sold out Kilby Court probably two or three times before I even like thought of like getting paid. I thought, holy shit, they didn't ask me for any money on the venue to like rent the venue. And like, I was just lucky, so I didn't bring it up. You know what I mean? And turns out I probably should have been making some money on that. But like, um, I didn't even know to get paid because I just thought, hey, I'm going to pay dues for a while. And especially when I was opening for bigger names, it was just like, hey, this is putting on this is adding to my portfolio and like I still do free shows for that reason if it's um if there's good exposure or there's good networking or there's a chance I'm going to meet an artist I look up to or something like that then I'm going to still do a free show because there's a lot of other ways to be compensated for a show that are way bigger in the long run than money you know I'd rather do a free show if it's the right show that has a chance to go bigger and network with some huge agent or promoter or something like that than do a small show where I'm not going to meet anyone and get 500 bucks for it. You know what I mean? So it's like there's bigger things than money. you got to think about that. And it's, you know, you, a lot of times you're getting paid in networking and you're getting paid in experience. And those are very, very valuable. And those are not to be um, taken lightly. So um, it's not always just about how much money you're getting. A lot of times you're just getting compensated in way bigger ways so think about that as well before you get too frustrated on not getting paid you know um think about all the people you've met from those shows and all the people you've had a chance to show your skills to who might pay you in the future or just reputation that you're building your name's getting out there if you're starting to do tons of shows then you're starting to develop leverage and that's very important i'd rather have a lot of leverage under my belt than 50 bucks here and there you know gas money and shit like I'd rather have the leverage of like just building the network and building that fan base and having a reputation of someone who brings tons of fans because if you have that reputation then when there's people that have budgets that can pay you they're gonna hear your name it's gonna be brought up when they're thinking of who to book so as someone that's been on both ends of the spectrum you know gotten paid and I'd probably I think I'd gotten paid in like over like 25 or 30 different states to perform um i've gotten paid from venues tons of colleges bars um festivals all different types of situations and i've also been the one throwing those festivals or being on committees that are throwing them and deciding that shit so i've been the one deciding who gets paid and how much they get paid and and i've been negotiating contracts and reaching out to big artists and figuring out how much they get paid and how much they is so I've, I've got a lot of experience in this and the number one thing is just first of all you need to like just not be fully yourself yet you got to pay dues it takes a long time it takes a while to build that shit up and get and deserve to get paid in the first place really um but if you feel like you really are providing more value than you're asking in return then the second thing is you need to start asking for it. You need to be professional and ask for that up front. That needs to be one of the very first things that gets brought up when a promoter or anyone asks you to perform, even if it's a homie. That needs to be one of the first things that gets brought up. <clears throat> Let me take a sip of my cold brew coffee. Got a little cotton mouth from the PB or the PJ that I, uh, that's a personal joint that I smoked earlier. Hmm. Okay, anyway, and of course I spilled the coffee on myself, but whatever. Um, (laughs) What I was saying is you need to start asking. That needs to be one of the first things that you bring up because it's super unprofessional and disrespectful to try to bring that up later or get bitter about it later after the show's already happened or during the show or whatever. You can't, like, not bring it up and then be mad about it later. That's just, like, unprofessional and disrespectful, and it's just not good vibes. So that needs to be one of the first things. If you deserve to get paid, then fuck yeah. Don't don't be scared to ask for some money. <clears throat> now, you might want to start out with smaller amounts of money, depending on your comfort zone. But who am I to tell you what you should charge? I just think that you should <clears throat> you should believe that you deserve that amount. And in order to believe that you deserve that amount, usually you have, if you're a good person, you have to probably feel like you're giving them way more than you're asking. So for me, if I was charging 500 bucks, 
I had to genuinely feel in my heart that I'm going to sell more than $500 worth of tickets for them. I'm going to provide more than $500 worth of advertising and marketing for them online because of the amount of people that are going to engage with my posts. And I know that because I have this devoted fan base that hella fucks with me. And uh, I have to just genuinely feel in my heart that I deserve it. So once I genuinely feel in my heart that I deserve it and that I'm providing more than the amount I'm asking, then it's on me to ask for that in a professional manner and be willing to accept some rejection and re accept some negotiations, but also be willing to just receive that because I deserve it, you know? So a promoter hits me up. Hey, Bernie, I'm throwing this show on such and such date and I would love to have you perform. If I just say, hell yeah, that sounds dope, fam. Thanks, brother. They are expecting that I'm going to do it for free. So I have no right to be upset about it if I don't get paid later. I can't just, like, go... or And it's also rude if I'm going to try to bring that up, like, day before the show or day of the show and just all of a sudden put that stress on them when they weren't expecting to pay me. All of a sudden I'm like, yo, what up with some money? Like... So I need to bring it up right now if I really value this person and respect this relationship and want it to grow and want them to treat me as a professional and respect me long term. I'm going to have to bring this up right now. So I'm going to say, hey, that sounds like a dope ass show. Let me check my calendar and see if I'm available. Oh, word. I just checked my calendar. It looks like I am available that day. I had a couple other um, shows hit me up for that same weekend, but I haven't accepted them yet. You know, so if that's true, you don't make that up or whatever, but like something like that, you know, that's like a typical response. And you say, um, <clears throat> you know, sounds like a dope show. Looks like I'm available that day. I generally charge X amount for local shows. Is that in your budget? Question mark. And then, you know, they'll respond to you and they will say, a lot of times, you know, and just a lot of times I'll be like, oh, for sure, we can do that, no problem. Awesome, stoked, cool. And then you're like, sweet, sounds good, I'll send you my contract. And you send them a contract and you get that shit signed a second if they agree to anything. You want to screenshot those Facebook messages and you want to get them to sign something because it's really not official, just from like a verbal little like, yeah, dude, we can do that. Um, you want to get it official, so... Um, and then the second most popular thing is they will come at you with a negotiation. They'll say, I can't afford that much, but what if we could do this much? Or that's really not in our budget, but what if we could do like 50 bucks and some drinks? Or we could guarantee you this much plus a little more if it does well. You know, they could do something like that or they might come at you with a... Oh, we generally don't pay local artists, but we could do a ticket sale or we could do a uh, percentage of the bar or something like that. So you want to think about it and think about it long and hard and get back to them because you want to just weigh it out. Okay, maybe it's not that much money, but maybe it's a chance to build with this other person that does all these other big shows and it's a chance for me to prove my value to him. And in the future, he'll pay me more once he sees that I'm worth it. So a lot of times, like, I did free shows. If I know, I was like, oh, this is a big promoter. They throw all these badass shows I want to be on that's going to get me these new fans and, you know, give me a chance to open for these big artists and stuff. So, of course, I'm going to do this shit for free or for cheap for them so I can build with them because I'd rather build long-term with them than worry about a couple hundred bucks and miss out on an opportunity over, like, a small amount of money right now in the short term. So I would weigh it out like that. I'd also weigh it out as, like, how many people are going to be at this show? Is it going to be big exposure? Because maybe I could just get a lot of fans and it's worth it. Or maybe I could just sell a lot of merch. Or maybe it's like a venue I've been always wanting to play. And something like that. So I'm going to do this one for free. Um, if it's a venue you've played a million times. And you always bring tons of fans there. And it's not opening for someone that's big and exciting. It's not going to get you new exposure. And they're relying strictly off your fans. Then maybe be like more strict on how much money you charge. But always think about it as a whole and not just the money. Just think about it as exposure, long-term relationships, money, and 
like overall how much are your fans going to enjoy this show and stuff like that like think about all that stuff combined and that's your compensation package so evaluate that get back to them maybe try to negotiate a little bit more if if you say hey i usually charge 100 bucks and they're like oh we can't do 100 but we could do 50 you say ooh 50 is a little low for me is there a chance you could meet me in the middle and do 75 like be willing to negotiate that shit a little bit because a lot of times that's their job is just to try to get you for booked as cheap as possible because they're trying to minimize their expenses because I'll tell you throwing shows is hard as fuck and most of these promoters are losing money and the last thing they need to do is lose more money on some punk local that has a big ego and thinks he deserves all this money so a lot of times they're going to minimize their risk by just saying oh never mind we'll find someone else that'll do it for free but that shouldn't scare you off from asking you should at least try because they'll respect you more and then you know in the future they'll kind of know that you do charge so that brings me to like my second main point which is if you do free shows that's one of the best things you could ever do to build your career I really believe that I really believe that the reason I can sell all this merch and have all these devoted fans that put tattoo my lyrics on them and the reason I can get paid in all these states to perform and stuff like that is because I did so many free shows and continue to do free shows because I don't just look at the money. I know we've already really talked about that, but I just can't stress the importance of that enough. It's just like it's not only about the money. and There's an overall compensation package that needs to be evaluated anytime you're doing a show. And a lot of it's intangible that you got to think long term. you got to think big picture. So basically, you know, once you've... Once you really deserve to get paid and you're bringing out fans and stuff, then you got to start being professional and negotiating. And if you do a free show, you need to just make it very clear that I normally charge for shows. However, I'm doing this one for free for you for this reason, that reason, and this reason. Or I'm doing this one for free because you're the homie. And I'd rather build long term with you and grow together, you know, and have more success for both of us in the future. So I'm willing to take care of you on this one and, you know, promote it and bust ass and make sure it pops off for you because I know there's more opportunities in the future for us to both make more money. So, you know, not going to worry about it on this one. And you make it clear, normally it's 300 bucks. This time I'm doing it for free, or this time I'm doing it for 50 bucks because of that, and here's what I'm expecting in return. And you should still get some type of written agreement, even if it's not a paid show, but they're saying, um, we're going to give you this fat guest list and these drink tickets and stuff like that and these percentage of ticket sales. Draft up a one-page Google document that's that outlines your agreement and send it to them and have them sign it, you know what I mean? Anything that the promoter or the venue or the company or whatever agrees to, just get it in writing, just get in habit of having them sign a little something, you know, it doesn't have to be some long contract, it could just be this uh, simple one-page document, and I'll, I'll put it, I'll make a template for you guys even, I'll give you guys my exact contract, I'll put a link in the description of this podcast, so you guys can see exactly what a Burnell Washburn contract looks like that's been signed by you know, big companies like Subaru, it's been signed by University of Utah, Weber State University, um, in the venue, Saltaire, um, Urban Lounge, uh, um, festivals all across, like, just, like, all these, like, legit venues and companies have signed this exact contract, is my point, and so, and it's held up, so, I mean, I'll give you guys my exact contract and then you can just reword it with your own artist name pretty much and you'll have an awesome little thing that all you have to do is reword, like uh, type the your name and the whatever specific things that are relevant to the show that you're on and you'll have yourself an easy contract that'll only take like two minutes to edit every time you get booked. So I'm going to hook you guys up with that and hopefully that'll help you out. And it'll make you come across as more professional, even if it's you're not getting paid yet, but you're getting some type of back end deal or something like uh, that'll just help you like start standing out as a more professional, more serious artist that promoters are gonna look to and respect more in the future. So um, that's 
that's number one is that, you know you just really need to ask you need to be professional and ask about it don't ever just like assume that you're gonna get paid or bring it up during the show like that's just whack ask up front be a man or be a woman about it and if you feel like you really deserve because you paid these dues and don't be afraid to ask but also just think about that overall compensation package think about if the doing it for free or cheap is actually might like benefit you more than a small amount of money um other times you might just be able to say hey like could i could could i really want this show to pop off and be successful would you be down to pay for 50 bucks so i can pay um to get some extra flyers made and do a, a 20 bucks on a Facebook boosted post so all my fans know about it and a lot of times a promoter might be like way stoked like because they might already be spending a little bit of money to advertise it and they're like oh shit I'll throw him 50 bucks if it's going towards promotion or going towards marketing or whatever and a lot of times you can like just like start to edge your way into getting paid with small little things like that and you know don't be afraid if you deserve it you deserve it so big ups you know what I mean like if you've been killing it You should get some money for your skills and your services that you're providing. And uh, it's never, like, all about the money, but it's just, like, if you want to keep this shit going and you want to uh, be able to invest into, like, merch and invest into music videos and stuff like that, then getting paid for these shows where you're bringing all these heads out to is totally fucking necessary and you totally deserve it. And you should, you know, just start asking for it, but... Don't feel entitled just because you started rapping a year ago and all your friends think you're sick and you can fucking, you know, bring 20 heads out. Like, you got to realize it's expensive as fuck to throw shows. It's expensive to own these venues. And if you're not actually bringing more value, like, I would say for most local shows in my city, like you're not really bringing a profit to the venue until you're bringing at least 50 people that are paying five dollars or more each that's when you start to actually get to the you know and that's pretty obtainable that's 50 people that are willing to pay five bucks to see you that's that's really easy to do so that's uh that's not even that much money you know what i mean that's fucking 250 bucks but that's to the point where you start actually scratching the surface on breaking even on what it even costs for the venue to even have you perform there so because they got to pay a sound guy a door guy a bar staff they got to pay for electricity these uh speakers and all this music equipment they got to pay for the renting the space thirty five hundred dollars a month for their little fucking venue and it cost them x amount to run all this so you're not even bringing any profit until you're bringing at least like 50 to 100 people that'll pay five bucks each to see you or or that many people that'll like come buy a bunch of drinks at a bar and you can get a little percentage of the drink sales or something like that so um you got to really focus on building up your fan base by doing shows and free shows and putting out videos and networking and just being out and about in the scene and getting to the point where you're genuinely genuinely are bringing in profit to these promoters and these venues and these companies and once you are you'll start to develop a reputation and then your name will actually like build up more hype around it and then like people will start reaching out to you and offering you money and that happened to me you know it's like at first I had to start asking to get paid and stuff like that and then next thing I know I was getting offers like people were just randomly emailing me hey how much you charge to play shows or hey we we want to book Burnell Washburn for this event we have a thousand dollar budget are you down and it's like shit yeah I'm into that and like you know what I mean so like it'll once you build that reputation it'll start to have a ripple effect and you'll start being able to get paid uh get money for your shows and you know the bigger you get you start get a representation get an agent get a manager stuff like that you start getting on bigger festivals you start getting overseas you start making really good money you know like some of these rappers that we look up to are making a hundred fucking thousand dollars a show and that's crazy and you think holy shit but i mean hundred thousand dollars a show but they it's like 
they deserve it because they just had um, 40,000 people pay to see them or whatever, you know, like, it's crazy, like, and not just pay five bucks, they're paying 40 bucks or 50 bucks to see them, like, I remember when, like, Macklemore blew up, like, people were buying uh, Macklemore tickets for over $100 a piece, and they were selling out, and so it was like, okay, if you do the math on that, then, like, yeah, he's making the venue 600k, so, <laughs> of course, him and his manager deserve 100,000, you know what I mean, like, if you think about, like, how much, like, with the ticket sales and fucking drinks and concessions and all this stuff, like, at a huge sold-out show, like, a lot of these artists have, you know, the ability to generate some serious revenue, and I think it's really not that hard for you to start earning 500 or or 1000 a show, um, and I think you should work your way up, you know, start with 50 or 100 you know, depending on your comfort zone, and keep building up in there but like it's really feasible for local artists to be making a decent amount off shows and the other number one rule if you want to get paid for shows is you gotta stop doing so fucking many shows oh my god seriously I see local rappers doing and like I'm (laughs) I'm like talking all down but I used to do this so hardcore too I used to play like six shows a week too so I'm, it's, it's funny, I'm like son in my old self too. You gotta stop. It ruins your value. Promoters just immediately, even if you're like the most buzzing artist in town, people look at you and go, oh, but he's got six shows that month. Or he's not going to really promote mine or his fans aren't going to come. Even if, even if you have a lot of devoted fans, if you're playing that often, it really hurts your value because they're, they're not going to come pay to see you every single time so you're gonna get like a mix that you're gonna half your fans are gonna come to this show and the other half or like a third of your fans come to this one another third come to that one so like do less shows just be more selective on pick the right ones and you'll start getting paid more because your value will go up especially like if you are like super buzzing right now and like a lot of people in the scene are talking about you and you're kind of one of the top dudes or top ladies in the scene you need to immediately start making your shows scarce you need to immediately put that supply and demand in check and give them less supply so the demand goes up and thus the value goes up and thus when um if you have tons of fans but you only do a show every once in a while and so they're all dying to see you and they'll all pay whatever price to come see you and they'll buy a 25 dollar ticket to watch you open for someone um that's when you're that's when you're really valuable to an artist like I would like take a break and not do a show for two months and then I'd be I'm opening for I don't know Greaves or someone and it's a $30 ticket and like a hundred people in my in my uh fan base or like homie circle are going and buying a ticket just to watch me open for someone because I haven't done a show in two months and they're actually excited so if you do a show every week you just hurt yourself And you really need to put those in check, be more selective about it, and especially if you're buzzing. Like, if you're just barely getting in the scene, do as many fucking shows as possible. Go rap everywhere that they'll possibly let you touch a microphone, and just try to slay it and network and get your name out there. But, you know, once you're buzzing, you gotta be selective. You gotta start, like, putting that in check if you want to get paid. Anyway, that's... That's all the thoughts I really want to talk about. There's so much more I could go into, but like I said, I talked a lot about it in in um, the video that I made. I think it's called, like, how to get paid for shows and make more money doing what you love or something like that, or how to get... I don't know. I made a couple different videos that are along the lines, and I, I talk about a lot of value, valuable tools and techniques that you can use and you know being professional and showing up early for sound check and developing rapport and good relationships with all these people and I go into depth on all these different things that'll help you stand out as a professional artist and get paid for shows but that is about all the steam that I've got in me right now to just rant about this subject so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you found this episode valuable if you know any other artists or creative people that are trying to get paid for doing what they love send them over to check out the podcast and you know let's just keep spreading these good vibrations and helping each other out 
Much love. I hope the nature soundtrack in the background didn't completely ruin this entire episode. To me, I feel like it's, it should just add to the uh, ambiance of creative success because that's the beautiful thing about being a creative entrepreneur is that I get to come out here and be in the mountains, in the sunshine, sitting by a river, having a PJ, drinking some cold brew coffee, and just spilling my thoughts. And that's like part of my creative job and my creative journey that's helping me on the path to, you know, inspire others. And it's just a beautiful thing. So it's a blessing. Anyway, much love and much respect. Thank you guys for listening. Keep spreading love. We'll catch you next week on Creative Success. Oh, yeah, and share this shit. Spread the word, man. Bless up.